Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the twenty-third World Education Summit, the Higher Education Edition. And we are on the third and the final day of the uh, three-day summit, and we've had some amazing discussions. Today is the last panel discussion for the day, and in fact, for the event this edition. The topic of the discussion is enhancing classroom experience, key infrastructure aspects which can aid the teaching learning process. I am Karan Manjula. I am the assistant editor at Elit Techno Media, and I am the moderator for this panel. With me, I have some eminent panelists from across the country, and I would like to welcome all of them. I have with me Professor Ramesh Behel, Director, International Management Institute, IMI, Bhuvaneshwar, Odisha. Welcome, sir. Professor Dr. Yamini Agarwal, Director, Bharatiya Vidya Peet in Institute of Management and Research, New Delhi. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Miss Manisha Kavathekar, Director, Corporate Communication. IES University Bhopal Madhya Pradesh welcome ma'am Mr Harshil Kolwan Kolwankar concept developer education St Gobain Ecophone welcome sir and Thank we will be joined by three more panelists professor Dr Indu Rao director ASC in fact Dr Rao is here yeah uh, professor Dr Indu Rao director ASC Vellore Institute of Technology Vellore Chennai welcome ma'am we would have Mr Alok Chakravarti vice chancellor we have him here techno global university shillong meghalaya welcome sir and dr mohammad khurshid akhtar advisor king abdul aziz university saudi arabia i think you would be joining in some time so i think we can just start off the discussion and uh, not taking much time my first question is open to all our panelists and i would like a brief start from all of you my first question is what are the infrastructure aspects that need to be strongly considered to enhance the overall classroom experience and upgrade the teaching learning process and um, i would direct my question first to professor ramesh behel so you are on mute yeah uh, am i audible now uh, yes sir you are audible good evening everyone uh, and uh, thank you to the organizer for uh, this particular event uh, uh, see last two years uh, is uh, was was very very challenging and very interesting uh, because uh, everyone was uh, put to to the corner of the wall and uh, said uh, that yes you uh, every institution should uh, integrate the technology into the learning process uh, okay uh, so that's an exception uh, where we really say that okay we are forced to do that but uh, let's uh, look at it uh, what is required in the future uh, the future uh, if we really talk about it it's more to do with uh, engaging students uh, uh, and the faculty in, into the classroom learning process uh, and that's where the infrastructure requirement is to be designed and developed uh, as per that particular uh, objective in mind uh, okay uh, and uh, these two years uh, uh, gave uh, gave us a lot of uh, learning opportunities where uh, uh, we uh, we experimented with uh, lots of different options uh, uh, of uh, engaging students uh, whether uh, they were into the classroom or uh, they were uh, uh, working uh, from a, a remote areas uh, okay uh, so, uh, so 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 one of uh, the things which we really think is very very important and critical is uh, uh, that uh, uh, trying to develop uh, engagement labs uh, within uh, within the institution uh, infrastructure uh, where uh, uh, you try to involve students uh, 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 into each and every aspect of learning uh, okay because uh, in today's context if you really look at it uh, uh, more of a gamification uh, based models uh, teaching models are coming uh, and emerging uh, okay so it's becoming important uh, to uh, integrate more uh, simulation based tools uh, into uh, into the teaching uh, pedagogies uh, okay uh, over and above uh, uh, the traditional uh, case based uh, learning uh, methods or, uh, uh, or or any other traditional modes which we really talk about uh, okay uh, so so what we observed is that if you involve the student more uh, the learning uh, process changes totally uh, okay uh, and their engagement levels changes totally uh, so you don't have to really look at each individual student uh, the, the student itself drives the class and and that's that's one of the important aspects which we really talk about that uh, every institution should really try to explore uh, those options where 
they should enhance uh, their infrastructure uh, by creating uh, some of these kinds of labs uh, where uh, the involvement of the students are more uh, okay because the teaching and learning process is not uh, restricted uh, within the classroom it's it's outside the classroom also and and when we really uh, people started talking about the flip based classrooms that's that's an important aspect in any case but how you enrich that flip based classrooms also uh, okay so the the aspect is more to engage them uh, so so that's that's one uh, important aspect which i thought uh, is uh, we all need to really look into it i take a pause here uh, uh, let other speakers also contribute and then we'll come back and talk about it thank you professor bell in fact i would put across this question now to professor dr indu rao ma'am if you can also uh, you know share your views about what are the infrastructure aspects that need to be strongly considered to enhance the overall classroom experience and upgrade the teaching learning process thank you so much and once again i uh, compliment uh, digital learning and elets to organizing this event and always you bring up such uh, important topics which are so contemporary and thank you for making me a part of it it is not the first time i'm joining you i have had a very good experience every time for this particular topic uh, it is very contemporary because we have just opened up our campuses if uh, you know about it vit has more than 40000 students and you can imagine the campus without students and we were all online some people started talking as professor ramesh behel also mentioned that you know now the universities and the campus and infrastructure may become irrelevant because we can do everything online but uh, again there were uh, second opinions that uh, students uh, learn a lot while they are together and uh, students when they are alone in their homes they uh, do not learn from each other so the campus and the infrastructure and we are seeing it now when they are coming back to the campus those universities which have like uh, very good landscaping you know, they have in the campus they have uh, uh, wisely planted trees and classrooms which are uh, attractive to students you see the homes in on an average the indian home has become more uh, you know more designer people love people don't like simple spaces children people focus so much on their child when they are you know kids in their kindergarten and in school and the rooms of in the walls of the rooms they pay so much attention to it that if we bring them back into a infrastructure which is like very very um, you know it's mundane and it's uh, we just think that it will be it has uh, no impact it's only the class the faculty and the uh, you know the teaching and learning process that is happening between the people that is the faculty and students that is important it is not true in fact there has been research in different parts of the world which has clearly highlighted the uh, uh, difference students have in the learning and teaching process when there is a difference in the infrastructure and the ambience of the space in which the learning is happening so infrastructure aspects are very important both inside the classroom and outside the classroom of course it does not take away the importance of uh, who is the teacher and uh, what the uh, different pedagogies are and what are the learning materials i uh, still uh, you know put a lot of emphasis on the uh, quality of teaching and the quality of teachers and also on the training and development of teachers to suit uh, the various uh, 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 situations for example we were first having a problem transitioning transitioning from offline to online and now it is a reality there is a problem transitioning from online to offline neither students are fully comfortable with this nor teachers are fully comfortable with it because Uh, we know that uh, you know for human beings it's difficult to change and now everybody became so comfortable with the online thing at this particular point of time the infrastructure becomes even more important students should feel like going to the campus what will attract them other than the teacher because the quality of teacher and the learning process was happening online also now again that time has come when the infrastructure will in attracting the students to the classes and in uh, aiding the quality that is happening in teaching and learning in between the teacher and the student so if you have like the same quality of teachers in two different universities but if the infrastructure is much better in one it will definitely have a difference in the uh, 
in the way the student feels in the way when like for group activity you send them uh, you know outside the class or inside the class and at that time the teacher is taking a back seat and you are just uh, giving them giving them a uh, time to work in groups or do a field study of course the infrastructure is going to play a very big role yes multimedia and uh, uh, other facilities are uh, now almost mandatory because even the classroom teacher the blackboard and chalk is gone completely we, we we have even seen in 30 years we have seen times when we were using transparencies then we came to ppts now it is only multimedia if you want to show something through video if you want to show something which is having uh, you know both music and sound effects in it and for that again you need infrastructure so teachers have to be trained in these uh, uh blended learning digital technologies use of multimedia in fact uh, there are uh, lots of advancements at vit we use all kinds of things it's like uh, you know that 3d reality and uh, virtual reality. there are many things that can be added to the infrastructure in the classrooms as well as outside classrooms on the campus in the libraries in the student meeting rooms it is uh, uh, i mean i i remember when about 15 years ago i was Uh, both studying and teaching in the us universities i thought that you know these are so beautiful campuses and because of this we want to come up globally now many of our universities inside our country uh, are having beautiful campuses in fact when our faculty from abroad they come to uh, uh, these indian universities they are shocked they say we never thought india has such beautiful campuses now but it is true So we have done a lot in terms of infrastructure, and many universities have done a lot in terms of infrastructure. But still, a lot more needs to be done. And uh, if you're raising the awareness to this discussion that infrastructure does add to the uh, teaching and learning processes and the engagement that student has in the teaching learning process, then it's a very good thing. They should invested on infrastructure, and it need not be very expensive. Some creative ideas can make a lot of difference to both the classroom and outside classroom. and the campus to enhance the student engagement and learning i think i'll stop at this time and pass on to you thank you so much ma'am and uh, i would pass this question across to mr alok chakravarty mr chakravarty if you can also share your views briefly on this uh, question you see i am from industry i have an industrial background and then we i went to academy I've been to so many universities. The point, what I'd like to mention here, uh, as Dr. Bhavan said very correctly, uh, when you go to an industry, when you join as technical assistant and train, you are given hand-on experience. Go to a factory, you work there. then after 2 years or whatever is the probation period uh, you get confirmed and you may you may become an asset you may not that's over period of time now our education only very recently i find ugc is now recognizing that should be inducted in the training part or even education now Uh, the tools are available, but still, our uh, most most of the universities are trained for read and teach. Read experience and teach is lacking, so therefore, the students don't find anything very interesting. when i used to take classes i used to talk about my experience i never gave the experience of uh, in a book that they can read hundreds of example from my experience and on experience added to the theoretical part now of course you have vr ar uh, that can utilize very well in trying to give them how it actually happens if you go back very olden time they used to set up an experiment 
on the table of the class, then you can see. I have seen in UK that in a petroleum polymer technology institute that they have set up a refinery, small, they be all made of glass. So a student gets an insight into the whole process. Whole process. A medical student through VR or actual. See the medical uh, teaching, which is based on actual experiments or actual whatever. But what about other training? Unless an engineering student, say mechanical, electrical, electronics, have actually worked in a factory, maybe simulated as has been said, but we, we our infrastructure uh, uh, or our training of the professors are not up to the mark. We are carrying the tradition of read and teach. Read, experience and teach unless that comes. Because today, student is different. They are very much aware. They are aware of everything. Thank God to internet or thank God to what is available. They, they go and read. In fact, the basic knowledge is with them and we should encourage them to have a basic knowledge before they even come to the class. What, once they are in class, faculty should just handle it and let them participate in the class. Once is the participation in the class, instead of telling them this is right, this is wrong, Things won't work out. Students won't come to the class. There has, you know, people complain that they, nowadays students don't, they bunk the class more. Because they have other att <laughs> attraction. Unless the class becomes more attractive, class teaching uh, becomes more involved in the class. When every student becomes a uh, partner in the whole process of learning, group learning, as she has said, is correct. In the, in the home, you can't learn because it's very difficult. Group learning is exchanging views. That's good. But more than that, it has to be participated. You know, the whole education system in the West is different. We are only copying uh, the old system and we feel very comfortable in the whole process. We teach the subjects developed by other universities all over the world without even questioning. And those who know they are supposed to teach. No. In fact, time has come when the universities must develop their own literature based on their experience. I have seen one university in India, I won't name it. They are doing very good work in developing their own literature based on their experience. An idea is converted into a sellable product, a technology is developed. And that you teach. Let the students get involved in the whole process of the, and while they are involved in the process, they, they see the reference uh, from the class or reference from the book what has been done. That will be permanent because today there is management training system or, or uh, engineering training system is vanishing because of the high salary and demand. They are supposed to perform from day one when they join their specific industry. Be it management, universality of any knowledge is accepted. No one will challenge that. But performing in the factory, when suppose an alternator stops in a power plant, 
you should be able to know the answer. This is possible answers. They, your superior will know the exact answer. Otherwise, how you will contribute? That's why people uh, uh, lose their jobs. Jobs are available. Take it from me. Jobs are available. But our, uh, since our students do not find it interesting in the past, they don't learn. They only somehow will pass exam on the basis of uh, question answer. Question answer system is wrong. There should be such questions where students give their own opinion or give their solutions. Solutions. They only clear the class. Then you have interest. I never had less than 75 to 80 percent attendance. In, I won't name the universities where I've been and I didn't find the students feeling interested. But then suddenly they feel interested. They get attached to a problem. Then they solve the problem. Not only the entire class, every student feels a part to that solution. Think of it. And that is what I think is in teaching. And if we can develop it ourselves, we have enough knowledge. Our professors are very, very knowledgeable. I have interacted with our, so many people in, in India and worldwide after coming from industry. But I have found them lucky in giving solutions to the industry. But this, this is the only my view, uh, which uh, may be considered by the academia. I've always said this, even with the various meetings, that uh, people from industry who are investing 6,000, 200, 100 dollars, they have the experience and the shocks of failure and happiness of success. How they achieve? Innovation. Without innovation, can you survive? No. You can't just copy uh, and survive. Look at what is happening in Ukraine. So we have to innovate. We have to imbibe the culture of innovation. Let them make blunders. Doesn't matter. You only learn by mistakes. You never learn by success. There's no innovation. Our universities do not imbibe the culture of innovation. Very few. One or two years are trying very hard. That I must admit. But we have to take some. They are doing Even top class institutes, top, only a few departments. They imbibe this. I insist. This age. I can't Thank you so much, sir, for your opening comments. And uh, in fact, I would now take this uh, question across to Dr. Uh, Yamini Agarwal. And Dr. Agarwal, if you can uh, also, you know, quickly uh, give a small uh, brief about the question. The opening question that what are the infrastructure aspects that need to be strongly considered for the overall classroom experience? Ma'am, you're on mute. Ma'am, you're on mute. Okay, I... Yeah. Is this unmuted now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you now. Thank you so much for putting up the question to me. It's a pleasure to be a part of this panel. Well, I think uh, the most key important aspect in the infrastructure of any educational in, uh, in institution is primarily the faculty. So the most important aspect for the classroom teaching is the quality of the faculty that you have. Uh, the kind of level of learning as well as teaching process that the faculty adopts while uh, delivering the lecture. Uh, what also is needed necessarily in the infrastructure is support 
for materials, which included the blackboard at the end earlier. But today also very good teachers who are very old or elderly still use the blackboard technology instead of the PPTs. But today, as we see the learning and the teaching experience has become very varied and uh, there is a lot dependent upon the voice, a lot that is dependent upon the delivery in terms of the presentation, as well as in terms of the manner in which you engage with the audience on a regular time, minute to minute basis, so which includes audio visual aids, uh, which will include that you require an internet at times, a projector, as well as a good sound system, which helps you reach out to each and every student. Also, the spacing of the particular classroom needs to be such that every student can see the teacher and engage with himself, with the teacher in learning from not only his presentations, which may be going on on the board, but can see him uh, while he is teaching and while he is it's also important that when we understand that the teaching learning process includes both the student and the teacher engaging themselves in a dialogue, which includes that the teacher and the student has a one-to-one -one interaction and not only a one-way unilateral interaction. So the spacing in these classrooms needs to be comfortable enough in terms of showing that the teacher interacts with the student. Again, it needs to be a comfortable environment. I, I foresee a not in for much technology by saying that an AC classroom is the apt classroom or, uh, or a classroom which may have dim lights, which may only have the projector and maybe not the spotlight on the teacher, maybe an appropriate one. But what is important is it should be a comfortable, spacious classroom where people feel that they are coming together to learn something and have not been pushed into a particular thing or is not in a dim light structure, which is not addressed to their needs. So the spotlight needs to be again at the teacher at the same time, but spacious and well. So if even in circumstances where in places where there are no electricity, uh, a windowed classrooms, which also provides for a certain central places where dark, dark, present uh, dark spaces are there so that the presentation is visible at the same time with the curtains, maybe a sufficient infrastructure which may be there. Well, I also fully appreciate that when the teaching learning process needs to be there, there is a need for certain financial labs or certain other innovative labs to come in process. So you have uh, database labs which are there or you have certain other interactive labs which bring about a certain amount of a simulation process in the learning. So let's say in a financial process itself, we want to see show the stock markets and the live process and explain it. It should be possible for a teacher to go forward, explain it, express itself, and take it in that medium which is there. So the infrastructure by itself should be convenient enough to express what the teacher wants to explain. So there is no limitation today by thanks to the infrastructure, thanks to the capital that is put in, thanks to the curiosity that is there among the students, as well as among the teachers to provide for things. These all help in providing a lot of visual aids together with the teaching. But again, the key motivator in the teaching process continues to be the teacher. He is the one who's going to engage and his learning ability or his ability to do something well and motivate students or inspire students should be good. Another important aspect is collaborations with different universities and institutions to also simultaneously build upon us infrastructure, which leads to dissemination of knowledge. So there is a good professor at another university. He may come and speak to the school students. Also, library linkages, like there are certain government institutions which have linked libraries. So that knowledge dissemination is, again, very important and access to them. So I feel these are the key important infrastructural points which may be kept in mind while enhancing the experience of the student and the teacher. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Agarwal. In fact, it was very interesting of you to share this. I would put across this question now to Ms. Manisha Kawathikar also. Ms. Kawathikar, if you can also give your opening remark on this question in brief. All right. 
Thank you, Tarandum. Uh, again, a very good evening to all the panelists present here. At IES, we believe in student-centric education. So I would say infrastructure should be that which can facilitate the learning of the students. So that involves, of course, uh, ambient green campus, because like ours was the first awarded gold-rated green campus. So somebody who had visited the university, uh, he told us that the presence of sufficient amount of oxygen, it helps in better working of the brain. It helps the students to improve concentration. It improves their health. So that is how a student is going to engage 100%. So I would start with that. And the second thing post pandemic, I would say, is a very good sports infrastructure. Because students have been cooped up for so long, they need physical exercise, they need that blood coursing through their veins. So that is another thing, a good sports infrastructure will help them to safely engage in sports rather than going out to places where there's a lot of rush. And worldwide, we have seen that when students perform well in sports, academics, you know, also gets boosted by the vibe. So that would be the next thing for me. Then, of course, as everybody has said, wide, airy, lighted classrooms, given the excellent weather conditions in India, we don't need too much of electricity. It's also good for our SDGs. So that would be another thing. But then again, we come back to the digital learning. So that is necessary. So NPTEL and all these trainings are so necessary. Blended learning has come to be, it's come to stay now. So digital boards and uh, video lectures, and it should be a blended process. I wouldn't say only that, but yes, along with the classroom teaching, the teacher can be a facilitator who can help the student in self-learning. The point would be to make the student able to develop himself or herself to the best of the potential. Some student may be very much into academics, another may be more into skill development, another may be more into sport, but they do find their slot. But while in these young adulthood years, if they get all the exposure that is needed in all the fields, then they are really able to realize their potential. Of course, research and innovation has become the call of the day now. So adequate uh, expenditure or adequate faculty or finances should be you know, incorporated into funding that research. It can, of course, be done with industry collaboration. If the research is good enough for the industry to adopt, then, of course, they can fund it and students can learn. There are a lot of things you know, that the students can do at a very small level. Every day we hear of students who are developing maybe a cooler in a pot, in a matka, or, you know, developing hydroponic farming. There is a wide variety of research that can go on. There is somebody who is turning, you know, waste material into something very interesting right here at Bhopal. He's got a complete um, farm where he develops it and he's in the Guinness Book of World Records. So, so much of research can be done which maintains sustainability and environmental conservation. So I would say the infrastructure that supports the students' learning, that will be the best for me. If you to share this, I would in fact put this question, I would again, I, I would in fact put this question across to Mr. Harshvi Kolvalkar. Uh, Mr. Kolvalkar, if you can also give your opening remark on this question. Uh, sure, you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, sir, we can hear you perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, great. So those were really good points by everyone and it pretty much covered uh, many of the aspects. But uh, in a nutshell, if you see for a classroom per se, you know, there are various infrastructure aspects which are, uh, you know, very important. You know, your your lighting, your temperature, uh, your layout, all these are, are equally very important. But I would like to lay a special emphasis on acoustics because what happens generally is all the other things can be altered upon, right? So if there is, uh, you know, you can have the temperature high or low, you can have the lighting control, to a certain extent, the layout as well. Uh, but what generally happens is once your acoustics is done, once you build a school and the acoustics is, uh, you know, executed, then it becomes a, a quite a process to go back again. And it requires a lot of investment to really, you know, mend things. So 
acoustics is is one of the very neglected things when when we really talk about uh, the infrastructure as well the hearing comfort of uh, the users of the space which are the teachers and students uh, i i i sometimes come across many education institutions as well who who have time and again told me you know there is a problem uh, the music room is next to the classroom so there is sound percolation or someone coming that you know there is a lot of echo in the auditorium uh, or the canteen spaces so acoustics is also a, a very important aspect uh, when it comes to an education institution and to draw an analogy i'll say you know style if it's not backed by comfort it absolutely makes no sense in the same way if good aesthetics is not backed by good hearing comfort it absolutely makes no sense so while aesthetics are really important your colors you know the kind of uh, uh, design that you're using but at the same time acoustics is is equally very important and uh, to uh, really give it a perspective uh, study says that 87.2% teachers say noise in the classroom is leading to stress 65 t- uh, percent teachers have complained that uh, they have experienced voice related issues uh, you know arising due to speaking loudly in the class and almost 93 percent teachers have said that the class participation will improve if there is less noise in the classroom so yes uh, uh, this is uh, from uh, the pers- per se of teachers now when it comes to students you know your students are sitting across benches so the first bencher is able to hear differently than a last bencher so it it really is important that all of the students who are sitting wherever they are uh, you know sound on uh, sound is not compromised in in, in reaching them uh, uh, i mean i'll again say a study which says that the first bencher is able to absorb 80% of uh, the information uh this is not in terms of his intellectual capability just in terms of his hearing comfort and it goes to 50% to the last venture if the acoustics is is not taken good care of and uh, you know a student sitting below the fan or anywhere uh, has compromised sound so yes uh, in in the whole of the infrastructure aspects i i feel acoustics also plays a very important role and it it really uh you know needs to be taken care of as one of the panelists also mentioned the faculty is the main uh, uh, uh you know are the main party uh, in 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 terms of uh, the whole uh, education setup so the faculty needs to be taken good care of uh, through uh, a good infrastructure which involves acoustics thank you so much mr kolwankar in fact talking about acoustics and sound and noise my next question now is uh how does noise or high sound levels pose a barrier and hamper good teaching learning process and i would put this question across first to professor ramesh behel okay uh, uh, no everyone is talking about uh, a perfect infrastructure uh, in the complete uh, teaching learning process and uh, obviously uh, effective communication with your students uh, is an important factor out there uh, so whether it is uh, uh, the the acoustic levels uh, to be uh, set in a uh, correct order or uh, whether uh, the speakers needs to be put in a proper order within the classroom also because many a times uh, faculty tends to use the mics uh, okay but the speaker of that particular mic is only in the uh first uh, row or the second row of the classroom and uh, and you have a vertical classrooms which are being created by your uh, fancy architects uh, uh, right uh, and and uh, uh, if the layout of the classrooms are not proper uh, so the back benches are not able to uh, look at the uh, board uh, the white board or the uh, uh, overhead projector uh, presentations even uh, okay uh and and also at the same time they are not able to hear what the professor is trying to talk about uh, okay and neither the professor is able to hear the student what the student wants to uh, talk about so they need to basically reach out to each other and then try to understand and uh, uh, which basically means that uh, the two people are trying to talk to each other and teach and learn from each other uh, it's not uh, uh, the complete class uh, right so the class participation is missing in if the infrastructure uh, the sound infrastructure is not uh, properly implemented into the classrooms so classrooms uh, uh, 
uh, is one of the key infrastructure resource uh, an institution creates, uh, uh, right? It's not uh, about the aesthetics, uh, it's the effectiveness of, uh, uh, of the classroom is, uh, is very, very critical. The sound systems uh, inside the classrooms are important. Uh, sound absorbing systems are all equally important uh, because uh, uh, what uh, the previous speaker talked about, uh, the acoustics as one of the key, key concern areas. And, and we have seen in many of the institutions uh, 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 the sound vibrates. Uh, okay, people talking to each other are not able to understand each other what they they are trying to speak. Uh, right, and 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 when you are trying to teach a class of sixty or hundred students, uh, and if your uh, voice is not reaching out uh, to the last student in the last row, uh, okay, so your teaching is ineffective. How effective you are? Uh, how engaging uh, you are as a faculty? Uh, right, uh, so. So being an institution, you need to basically take care of uh, these, this basic infrastructure. Uh, okay, the back bench uh, in the class uh, should be able to speak uh, from uh, his or her seat uh, and the faculty should be able to listen to uh, not only the faculty, each individual class uh, participant uh, is able to uh, listen to that particular uh, student. Uh, what, what that student is trying to ask for uh, uh, or talk about uh, because the engagement level happens only when when every one of us inside that particular classroom is able to participate at an equal level uh, okay without using any extra aids so 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 when uh, the institution is trying to build these uh, classrooms they need to really take care of these gadgets uh, 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 so that the effectiveness of uh, the teaching learning process improves uh, uh, in, in a much much better manner uh, we have seen uh, certain classrooms where uh, the projection systems are also being uh, done only in one corner of the classroom. Uh, okay, uh, so one side of the class uh, class is able to uh, view this particular projection uh, properly, whereas the other side of the class may not be able to view that particular projection properly. Boards are not being uh, placed properly. Uh, okay, one side of the class able to uh, view what faculty is trying to write on that particular board other side of the class is unable to view uh, so so the technological uh, integrations needs to be done in that particular manner uh, uh, so that uh, whatever investments the institution is trying to do uh, is are effective uh, and uh, today all kinds of technologies are available people need to be aware of and people need to utilize that uh, 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 in in a right manner because uh, uh, whole objective is let's create an effective and an engaging class uh, uh, for our students uh, so it's not only the classrooms it is also outside the classrooms uh, so creating an eco-friendly uh, institution is is very very important uh, aspect thank you thank you thank you professor behel and in fact i would put put across the same question to uh, professor yamini agarwal also uh, Professor Garwal, if you can also shed some light on how does noise or how size sound levels pose a barrier and hamper the good teaching learning process? Ma'am, you're in mute. Yeah. Is it unmuted? Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am, it's unmuted. We can hear you now. So, uh, when we believe that the teaching learning process is going on, I think in most of the classrooms we find uh, that many of the professors and the faculty members usually do not have a public address system except barring about uh, the management schools that we see. In many of the classrooms, the teacher's voice is usually be the voice which reaches out to the student. So he's on the, play, he's on the front which is there and most of the classes at, at one side where the entire uh, sound is reaching from the uh, first bench to the last bench so thereby the most modulations usually go by the teacher where there are public address systems it is necessary that the public address systems are such that the decibel levels are maintained at the comfortable level also it it enhances at the same time the particular modulations which a teacher brings about what again, another thing that is required is that in many management schools and higher educations, we don't restrict ourselves to the audiovisual aids that are there because teaching is considered to be an audiovisual treat for that 45 minutes, for that one hour or for that two hours that you're doing. And you have to be very engaging before the, the particular audience turns to be unrested. So when we are trying to do that, we need to see that we 
uh, try to create both audiovisual aids, which may be like the projections or where we are running the uh, videos or we are running that. The voice system is not too loud to the person who's closer to it and is not very, uh, uh, very dim to the person at the back. So it should be a decibel level which reaches out to each and every one in a more comfortable manner so that he does not have a difficulty. When we go to international forums, which they have, they usually also provide mics with translators. So a lot of time we need to again look at further uh, uh, innovations. There are many universities which are looking at international students. So then whereby the international students attend these classes, thereby you need certain mice which even have translators while the particular thing is going on. It translates it into the different languages which the other person has. So these are certain visions that one needs to look at when we are talking about the classroom teaching. Again, the teacher is one of the most key important aspects for it. One cannot, one also needs to at times build in barriers for external noises. External noises, let's say if you are close to a bus station or you're close to a railway station or you're close to a noisy place, that noise doesn't creep into your system, which creates more barriers for you. Also, one classroom teaching should not affect the other classroom teaching, especially when it moves to audiovisual aids, because the volume systems can be much higher and can be disturbing for the others. So these are a few points I think need to be taken care of. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agarwal. And my, my next question now is uh, about uh, the strong need of acoustic infrastructure. There is a very strong need for increased awareness regarding acoustic infrastructure in the country. How do you think it will benefit the users of the space? And I need to hear views from Professor Indura. Professor Rao, you're on mute. Ma'am, you're on mute. It's a very interesting yes, question. I was, I was happy to, uh, you know, that uh, Harshil ji, he brought out this topic of, of acoustics. Because for me, I, uh, I can tell you that, uh, you know, when there are two, two things which make a difference in the class. One is the size of the class. That means size of the physical class. How big is the class? If it's a very big class, there are some faculty like me, you know, when we speak in the class, we can't be even heard by the second row. Because our voice is very soft. I had always had that problem. So we definitely need a mic. Second is the strength of the class. How many students are in the class? So if you have like say 150 students in the class, it goes without saying at any point of time, you need uh, for anybody whose voice is very loud and you know, very, uh, very strong or somebody who has a soft, soft voice, you do need a some system to address people till the end. Then also in order to get the responses from the students, you need some kind of arrangement that uh, the student's uh, voice can be heard back by the faculty. And uh, here, the uh, I think the online was really helping us like anything, because uh, as uh, you know, Yamini, ma'am, she pointed out that modulation, when, when we talk, the a good teacher, a good faculty has a lot of modulation in her voice. So one has to be very comfortable that, you know, the sound can be very low at some point of time, it can be high. And at all times, it can, it should be heard because that actually engages the student unless you change the tone of your voice and uh, you have uh, different expressions at different times of time for any kind of subject point it's, it's not just about some uh, languages or history that you're talking for any kind of thing during a classroom setting when there is a modulation then the class is more engaging and when there is a modulation it's very important that the sound is very well heard it goes without saying that you know in your next door uh, class uh, sound you should not be getting so absorb uh, sound absorbing systems have to be there i think there is a difference between different universities we have more than 1000 universities and all universities uh, we cannot expect the same level of infrastructure it infrastructure has been adopted by everyone out of necessity and uh, I, I think going from here, some of the uh, uh, you know faculty who are uh, very good at uh, um, uh, you know there are master classes for a faculty who have a really high uh, kind of student ratings. For them, I think you should uh, transfer the classes to the auditoriums. I, I will share with you in VIT, we have a very good uh, infrastructure, both inside the classrooms and outside. We have a 372-acre campus, you know, with more than with the, 
an endless number of auditoriums, in fact, 100 uh, eating joints and uh, uh, student spaces, some sections completely for students and other things, so which creates a lot of uh, uh, interaction amongst the students and they can go and sit at any place and they, they can even reserve some classrooms and some student uh, rooms to for discussion rooms and then they will have a very good sound system and acoustics are taken care of but not in um, uh, and it is very important it is very very important uh, and that's i think uh, you you asked me a question how important it is i think that's uh, in infrastructure that is the most important thing because if you can't hear uh, you can't hear how can you have that uh, interaction and how can you have the learning and anything else noise or uh, anything else will be disturbing but uh, I feel going from here, you should probably uh, make some differentiation between faculty who can really manage when uh, the sound system is not very good and faculty who cannot manage. Because I, I myself uh, have a problem. If, if the systems available in the infrastructure are not good, I cannot take a class. Although my student feedback is very good, but in the absence of this sound system or acoustics, it will have uh, no impact on the students at all. So to me, that's very, very important. And uh, if uh, the entire university or if the entire infrastructure space in any university does not have an even distribution of these kind of advancement of systems across, then we need to do this. And this is just this idea just came to me while I was listening to all of you. I think going from here, uh, even I never thought that this was such an important thing, but uh, you should uh, differentiate between faculty who can, you know, manage a class even when the system is not so good, because we cannot, you know, overnight transform this a very good acoustics for all the classrooms, but you can differentiate because some people, they have a very good commanding voice. They can handle in any kind of situation, they can uh, handle a class. But if you differentiate and then accordingly place them in places where are the differentials in the level of systems, of course, if you can make it uniformly accessible to all universities, to all classes everywhere, then that is an ideal situation. Yes, it is a very important thing. And where it is not available, we must uh, definitely try and um, have those systems in place. Thank you, Dr. Rao. And in fact, I would put this question across to Ms. Manisha Kavathikar also. Ms. Kavathikar, if you can also uh, you know, share your views on the increased awareness regarding acoustic infrastructure, how will it benefit the users in this space? Definitely, as uh, shown by all the panelists, it is most important because if a student cannot hear what is being said, where does the learning happen? And in these days of audiovisual learning, especially what we have observed in the pandemic, like if we talk of even the uh, blended classes or the online classes, usually in a digital device, the peripheral noise is louder than the actual speaker. So that creates a problem. The same happens in a classroom also, like we talk of hearing and listening. We hear a lot of sounds, but to make sure that we are listening to the voice of the teacher or the facilitator, that becomes important. And in, to help engage the student, it becomes extremely important. Of course, there are a variety of roof tiles, acoustic tiles, there are a variety of upholstery that is used, and there are uh, wooden floors and there are walls also you know with certain tiles that can absorb sound so that the other classes do not uh, get disturbed but again like ma'am just said it's an extremely expensive infrastructure so it is important to design the classes in such a way that you know the voice do not transmit from one class to another again in india we do have open spaces whether there is ambient we can have classes in the open also like ma'am just said, uh, in the ma'am said, we can have, you know, a distribution, we can sort out the faculties, like who can be given exactly which classes to achieve the best results. Thank you, Professor Kavatikar. And in fact, my next question now is to Mr. Harshal Kolvankar. Uh, Mr. Kolvankar, uh, what kind of acoustic parameters do you think need to be considered while designing a classroom? Since you're an expert, your organization is an expert in this. Uh, and if you can share your views on this. Uh, sure. So to quickly uh, tell you about the parameters. So first is the echo. So many a times what happens is uh, we heard that there should be, you know, mic and speaker systems. Uh, now, what really happens is uh, we did one of the schools and they had this issue. Nowadays, we have e-learning being played. Now, what happens is when the e-learning module is being played, some of them are in, in, in different accent and some of them are in probably Indian accent. So what happens is 
the sound intensity is increasing so if students are not able to hear well they tell the teacher that you know may you increase the sound so the sound intensity is increasing but the speech clarity is not increasing so although they will be able to hear much more but they would not be able to understand what is being said and this is where uh, you know what really helps is an infrastructure so uh, i'm i'm getting into my sales shoes right now but uh, to be very honest we have infrastructure that absorbs 90% of the sound that hits no, no, you, uh, you know uh, the you just, the you just uh, yeah, created sorry. a need you just created a need like a sales person you know you just <laughs> just realize <laughs> yeah hope so so uh, exactly so uh, we have uh, you know this infrastructure which absorbs 90% of the sound and honestly it does not need much of an investment to be honest um, uh, many of times we have been really tolerant to noise and we do not know that there is uh, you know a solution to the problem of noise so uh, to coming back to your question so echo is uh, you know one of the things or reverberation time as we call it and then we also call something called as the speech clarity which i earlier mentioned so when the teacher is speaking there is already the background noise which is there and when the speak uh, teacher speaks the background noise get involved with the uh, you know teacher speech and people are not able to hear well so when the background noise itself is less then the speech is clearly heard by by uh, you know the the users of the space or the students uh, to be honest and uh, also sound propagation uh which means that uh, the privacy of sound or the spread of sound so if group 1 is discussing something over here then group 3 probably shouldn't be hearing it or uh, you know should not have the interference of their sound so uh, it's the, the acoustic infrastructure has gone that developed that it can really stop the spread of sound to without any any kind of you know speaker systems or anything just your infrastructure uh, uh, that is that is you know laid out and my last uh, point is the overall sound pressure level uh, i'm sure you all must have been to food courts uh, in 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 malls and you all know how chaotic it is uh, in 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 those spaces and similarly in cafeterias and canteen spaces as well you know how sound levels can be really irritating and that's where uh, it is very important to curb that sound and uh, uh, really help you in communicating and having your meal in 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 a in a stress free manner so uh, pretty much those are the you know acoustic uh, parameters and it is certainly possible uh, 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 you know obviously i i mean i cannot tell you i can directly get in touch with you and we can surely discuss how how we can uh, you know uh, take it ahead and uh, get a good acoustic environment for your teachers for your students and uh, for the overall development thank you mr kolwankar in fact the fact that your voice is the clearest amongst all the panelists here <laughs> of course uh, you know makes us all realize that yes of course there's a very strong need for an, a better acoustic infrastructure whether it is in the institution or anywhere else in fact in the offices as well so i totally uh, rely on that and that brings us to the end of this uh, panel discussion and uh, it was a wonderful discussion where we understood the importance the significance of a good in, uh, acoustic infrastructure and uh, we also had an expert telling us about how things can actually improve for students in the uh, in the university campuses i would now ask my back end team to present the token of gratitude certificates for all our speakers today this is for dr for mr alok chakravarti thank you so much sir for your presence it was a pleasure it was a pleasure having you here with us today for professor dr indu rao uh, thank you for so much ma'am for being here today it was a pleasure listening to you for professor ramesh behel thank you so much sir for being a part of this event and for being a part of the session for professor dr yamini agarwal thank you so much ma'am for being a part of this event and sharing your views for ms manisha kawathikar thank you so much ma'am for being uh, here today and sharing your views one for mr harshil kulwankar thank you so much sir for being a part of this event and sharing your views on the need for a strong acoustic infrastructure it was wonderful listening to all our panelists in fact all three days have been really really insightful uh, talking to panelists and listening to them from across the country thank you so much for being a part of this event it was wonderful having you all here thank you so much and have a great day